Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the January 4th edition of the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm Greg Chris. That is Dave Gorby coming to you live tonight from McGuffin's Mystery Hole. We apologize for getting on late. We uh, just had a few technical problems we had to get ironed out before we got on the air. Uh, so we appreciate you sticking with us and uh, enjoying the show. We've got a good show tonight. Uh, got Mr. Eugene Napoleon going to be on with us. Uh, fantastic football player, one of the all-time greats at WVU. And, uh, Gorb, you don't remember him, but I do. And uh, it's because mm-hmm. you're not old enough to remember him. But I remember him well. Heck of a ball player. And he's got all kinds of other stuff going on in his life. It's really cool stuff, too. So we'll talk to him about mm-hmm. some of that as well. Uh, but we're going to talk some WVU football, amongst other things. And we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But like we always like to do, uh, we'd like to head out to our one eye in the sky, our Chopper 1 NRN traffic and weatherman, Mr. Muggy McLeod. Muggy, are you there? Yes, sir. Good evening, Coach. This is Muggy McLeod and my trusty, musty co-pilot, Misty Ring. Oh, musty. One eye in the sky, NRN Chopper 1 traffic and weather team report. We are coming to you live from the NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. Where it sounds like the Cleveland Browns are playing in the dog pound. Yeah. However, we are trying to fly around and prepare all those West Virginians who are attending the college football national championship. Trying to prepare them from for the shock. Yeah. Not shock from the cold because it's warm out here, but from the sticker shock of the game itself. <laughs> for example. A regularly priced seat starts at eight hundred and thirty-four dollars. Hmm. Becomes becomes complete with a cotton ball for the nosebleed you will surely incur from the height of the seat. That is a hundred twenty-five thousand square foot facility with seventy-five thousand seats and a retractable roof that we are flying over now. Oh, so, awesome. Misty and I will be hovering above the retractable roof in hopes of sitting with the same view as some of those $834 tickets. Yeah. Yes, so hope we don't have the nosebleeds there. Yeah. However, West Virginians will be happy to know that there is still, or that there is a Bud Light Plaza, a Bud Light Lounge, a Bud Light Cantina, and a Crown Royal Saloon to yeah. purchase your favorite legal beverages. Well, I'd say West Virginians will be glad to hear that. Yes, all three of them. As we fly around the neighborhood, we see the NRG Astrodome. Astrodome. Hey, I thought that uh, the dome, Astrodome, was torn down after the Bad News Bears played there in the 70s. But I guess I would. Anyway, Coach, they at least uh, renamed the uh, area where it used to stand as the NRG Astrodome. But uh, anyway, uh, moving down Kirby Drive to the S Loop Freeway. Points of interest to West Virginians in town would be the Dollar Tree, the 99 cent only store, the Goodwill, the Five Below, the Dollar Tree, Starbucks, Marshalls, and feel they will feel totally at home because we've spotted a Walmart and the South Main RV Park. Wow, that's like that's right down our road. Yes, sir. Everybody will be pleased. Oh, Go yeah. Feel just okay. like home. Traffic is light toward the. Uh, Traffic is very light tonight, Coach, because in Houston, streets are as flat as a donkey's ass and as wide as a mother-in-law's. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the weather, which is brought to you by Hong Kong Food Market. Where you, you mentioned this ad, and the store will, uh, in the store, you will receive a free set of chopsticks with every box of King Kong Ding Dong Ping Pong Ball sets you pick up. Oh, nice. Yes, so the weather here is uh, seasonably warm, as expected, with highs in the 60s. So break out those sleeveless shirts and white beaters, West Virginians, and enjoy your stay in Houston. Absolutely. Okay, Coach, this has been Muggy McLeod and my adorable sidekick, Misty Rains, with your NRN Chopper 1, one eye in the sky, traffic and weather team report. All right, Muggy, appreciate you, buddy. Fly safe out there and enjoy the game. Yes, sir, Coach. Over and out. Over and out. Bye-bye. All right, that's Muggy McLeod calling in from uh, NRG Stadium down there where the big games get ready to take place, Gorb. Mm-hmm. Pretty exciting stuff right there from Muggy. Uh, all right, we uh, talked about this earlier today. We're going to start a little new activity, a little new segment, not really a segment on here, uh, just some stuff to initiate conversation and talk about what's going on in the past week sports-wise. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know who came up with this name, but it's called Hell Yeah, Hell Nah. So what we're going to do, 
We're going to pick two each, hell yes and two hell no's, and uh, talk about them a little bit, good things and bad things that we think went on this past week. All right? Okay. And I'll go first um, Okay. because I thought of the game. So I got to go first this time. You can go first next time. Um, my first hell yeah, of course, is WVU's annihilation of North Carolina last week in the bowl game, mm-hmm. in the Duke's Mayo Bowl. And, uh, Gorb, <clears throat> I don't know about you. I know you went down the game. You know, I kind of had the feeling, I said this last night, that um, Western did, it didn't seem like we played exceptionally well, but we still dominate, especially the second half. Well, well I think it was a performance, and Neil said it a few times in his post-game stuff, that it was more of a game one, even though the offense did their thing. I mean, they scored on the first play of the game. Right. Um, their timing, uh, seeing just everything, just it wasn't like way off, but right. just the offense just seemed like like they've been off for a month. Right. Uh, but I think it was a game definitely won by the defense and uh, the special teams. I, I think um, you know once we got that lead uh, up on North Carolina, they they had to try to do things that 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 fresh quarterback right. uh, on his first start he he really never done and. Uh, what we end up with, like six or seven sacks. It had a sack on the very last play of the game. Right, right. And right. Uh, um, obviously, we, we made a few special teams plays there. Uh, one was a, you know, took one to the house on punt return by Beanie. Beanie. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wish we had him another year. It'd <laughs> be know? nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be mm-hmm. nice. Well, and I said, uh-huh. uh, going down there, I said, uh, we were doing our predictions on another show, and I, we were talking about it, and I said, mm-hmm. I think West Virginia's going to win. And one of the big reasons I thought was that West mm-hmm. Virginia felt like they had a purpose to go down there and play. They mm-hmm. wanted to be there. They wanted yeah, to play. They wanted I, to win. Uh, I'm that, so sure that, that, that was that was uh, you know that that was very evident. Uh, yeah. Not only with the the team but the fans. Yeah. I I couldn't believe. Uh, you, you know, it was funny. So I posted a pic. It was an hour before the game. You know, I just want me and Sonny wanted to get in there and eat. Right. We were hungry. <laughs> And uh, there was all only drinking vendors outside the stadium. There wasn't any uh, no food. No food. You know, I mean, you know, me and Sonny, we got got to have some food. Got to have some food. So, <laughs> so we went in. I posted a pic, and you know, that, that guy we've tried to get on the show from up north. He was like, "Good guys, there are only thirty fans there." I'm like, Poland, it's yeah, hour before the game, right? And, but yeah, it, it it you know, I think they said there was maybe forty two thousand was the yeah. Uh, thing uh, it was the attendance. I want to say it was at least thirty five, thirty six thousand yeah. WV fans. Yeah, that's what it, it was. It, I mean, it wasn't anywhere close. And I've also <laughs> heard that the Dukes people were tickled to death with West Virginia's crowd. Yeah, so really, really mm-hmm. about the enthusiasm. So I just felt like West Virginia mm-hmm. felt like they wanted to go down there and win. Yeah. They cared. I'm not so sure all of North Carolina's team did. I think you know. I think they just kind of went through the motions and mm-hmm. uh, kind of figured that might happen. Uh, my next. Hell yeah, we'll move on. Is and you don't care a thing about this, but I do, and that is that the Cleveland Browns clinched their playoff spot, and they are chilling out this weekend against Cincinnati. They're not even gonna play. Joe I, I know what you. I know who you want to play, <laughs> and you want. I think you probably rather go there. I mean, I think they're probably gonna be number one in the AFC. Yeah. Uh, but you want to go there with Joe Flacco. And Joe Flacco beat him oh, at that stadium. Storybook, storybook, <laughs> storybook. And if the NFL does anything, uh-huh. I don't know uh-huh. if it's on the up and up or not, but they do have storybooks, and that would be a, a Cinderella story right there, would it not? I be? mean, it, it it's crazy <laughs> how many backup quarterbacks yeah. have played this year, but the difference, <laughs> the one difference, I mean, you know, the Jets. Go with well, I guess you count Zach Wilson as a backup, yeah, because yeah. Rodgers played three snaps. But what a, you know, just like that, and they're bringing in guys like that, and you know, you, you guys went out and got a guy, yeah, Joe Flacco, and necessarily, you know, when the Ravens went away from him, it, it wasn't necessarily say he was done. It was just say, hey, it's time for Lamar, yeah, got Lamar to kind of do his thing. And he he kind of was like that guy. He was just that fill-in guy for somebody younger, even though he he clearly can still. Still sling it, can't he? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can't help but think that if the Browns mm-hmm. didn't have most of their players, yeah, uh, they'd be a contender. But with all the injuries they've got and all the mm-hmm. starters, out uh, for the whole season. Uh, I mm-hmm. don't know if they can hang or not, but they're they hanging in. So, so here's a question, even though I, I know you want to think playoffs. 
you got Deshaun Watson to that contract. Do yeah. you re-sign Joe Flacco? Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. It's going to be a decision for him, especially if he wins mm-hmm. a playoff game or two. And, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, they'd have to really think about it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Who knows? I mean, they got mm-hmm. that money wrapped up in, you know, how that is. Well, they got him and then um, what was the running back? Chubb? Chubb, Nip Chubb. Nip. He went out early. That was like week. That was the first week. First week that happened. Yeah. Man, wow. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Probably the best running back in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're starting quarterback. You're starting left tackle. You're starting right tackle all mm-hmm. out for the season. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? Oh, wow. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that's a hell yeah mm-hmm. for me. I'm sick tickled for him in the, in the mm-hmm. playoffs. My mm-hmm. hell nalls. This is my hell nalls. Number one hell no is these commentators hammering Florida State after they got beat in their bowl game, saying they don't see that proves they didn't deserve to be there. Well, no, it does not prove that. And I even my favorite Mad Dog Russo heard him the other mm-hmm. day just slamming Florida State. I don't want to hear any more out of them. Blah 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 blah. But you know, first of all, the wind was taken out of their sails. Right. They had no. Um, no way they could have been looking forward to going and playing that bowl game. They, they, okay, I get it. You know, <laughs> SEC, SEC, SEC. Right, what, right. what, what, it's not going to be SEC national champ this year, which is different. But, anyways, y- you know, they do everything they had to do, right. and they play two SEC schools yep. in their non conference. So they did everything they were supposed to do. And I know they got beat 63 to three, but. I think you said the number last night. I think it was thir- I think it was thirteen starters. Thirteen starters. And there was like twenty, 20 some, some. Yeah, twenty yeah, some. Twenty some players and, total. Yeah. And uh, and then even even the 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 second string quarterback was already in the portal. So they right. went with the quarterback they played right. in the um, the ACC championship yep. game. Yep. Uh, yeah. And then I even heard another uh-huh. guy called in and said something about. Uh, well, so and so team was playing with their backup quarterback, and uh, they did fine, blah, blah, blah. And I said, but that's one player, you know. Yeah. I mean, you're talking – their whole team was wiped out. Right, they, they, yeah. They didn't they, – you know, he had a bunch of young freshmen out there playing mm-hmm. in Georgia. And even I, even yeah. Kirby was saying it in the post game that, yeah. that that was the team that had to go out there right. and play. It wasn't fair. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and Georgia, I, I still uh-huh. say, is the best team in college football. And that was uh, – that was my argument too, um, with mm-hmm. this thing. You know, they they use the same argument to uh, argue against Florida State as they did to argue well, for other teams. Well, and you know, Georgia lost to Alabama, who uh, you know lost to Texas, who and then barely beat Auburn. You know what I mean? And the, so I'm just like, what? Well, you're using the same the, argument. The whole you know? the whole problem was, of course, we've always just had that one national championship game. And then they went to this playoff, which mm-hmm. was four teams, which I guess it's better. But the problem was you have five power five conferences yep. and you only let four teams in. Yep. And then <laughs> and that's another thing. We had this discussion last night. I'm sure you heard it about mm-hmm. conferences, and I brought this up. You look at all these conferences mm-hmm. and there's two good teams at the top, and then there's kind of everybody else. Now, the Big Twelve, now that Oklahoma and Texas are gone, mm-hmm. theirs is all gonna be the same. But the SEC's like that, the Big Ten's like that, and, and just because these commentators say Penn State's a great football team, don't mean they are, you know. Mm-hmm. And they always give you that impression that all these teams are so great, and they're really not. I mean, they're just average football teams, mm-hmm. but they make it sound like they're so good. So they got all these teams in that mm-hmm. conference in the SEC: Florida, Florida, uh, Florida, and, and LSU, and uh, you know Georgia and mm-hmm. Auburn, and blah blah blah. But there's only a couple of them that are dominant mm-hmm. and really, really good, and the rest of them are just average, you know. Mm-hmm. So this, these arguments they put out there just irk me. And I'm not a Florida State fan. I, I couldn't care less about Florida State. But I think they got hosed. Yeah. <laughs> I still think that, no mm-hmm. matter how bad they got beat. Uh, my last one, my last hell nah, is um, the NFL officials. And <laughs> you know, hey, you know what was funny earlier tonight? I haven't I haven't talked to him in a while. Till he chimed in there a couple of weeks ago, Mitchell said hit him up tonight. Now, <laughs> now I didn't know if he just said hey, just hit him up, hey, chit chat, or did he know that we had a show tonight right. to hit him up and uh, perfect timing. I'd be like Mitchell, how did uh, would you look of a, a, a guy that's six foot eight like come up beside of you or not not look his way at all? And you know, this is my whole thing with it. 
Mm-hmm. Why can't? Because I heard the NFL come out today, fully supporting this guy. He made the right call. Blah, well, blah, blah. well, you you know why? Because he's you knew they were supporting him because he he has the who's the Steelers play this week? Steelers and the Ravens. He that's the game he's assigned to. Right. right. They don't care. They don't. No. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, this is what I've always said. Mm-hmm. Why can't these officials? Mm-hmm. I mean, when you got instant replay, mm-hmm. you got all this sound, you got everything to mm-hmm. assist you. When they screw up like that, and there's been some big screw ups this year. I mean, some mm-hmm. major. I mean, I was watching a Browns game one day. Amari Cooper catches a pass on the sideline and goes down the sideline, and scores a touchdown. And the official caught him out of bounds. An official standing right there beside it, and it was a yard from being out of bounds. And I'm like, what are you? What, what are you seeing? Mm-hmm. I don't understand this. Why can't they just come out? If this guy would have come out Monday, when well, I don't even remember when the game was, I guess mm-hmm. it was Sunday, and said, he, you know, was he wasn't even owning up to it. No, why not just say, you know what? I probably blew that. You know, he, I got he, confused. I thought they did. were running. I thought they had seventy coming in. That's who they've been putting so, in the whole game. I so, got confused and I blew it. So Same the guy, it. so the guys, you know, that's been coaches or players, they've clearly said that was a plan right, of having right, seventy report. Right. All five. Along. Uh, it was about five, six times during the game. Right. Right. All along. Yeah. And yeah. it was a game plan. That's yeah. right. It's a good mm-hmm. plan, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, obviously, and uh, it, worked, it worked too good. <laughs> it worked too good. But I just don't get, and this is uh-huh. this is why I got the hell and all on them. I know everybody uh-huh. makes mistakes, and I'm not saying they shouldn't be making mistakes because it happens. They do make mistakes. Of course, with replay, they mm-hmm. shouldn't be making as many as they do. But why not say I I freaked? Well, right, them. they're I not taking it. accountability on it. Now, at if all. he would have said, if he would have said I blew it, I'd been they're, they're blaming. They're blaming. That big that big lineman that caught the pass, you gotta go up to him. Right, right. You're you're six foot eight, like, and that guy is teeny yeah. tiny. Yeah, three hundred pounds. Like and you you can't see him coming towards you at all. Do you ever do you uh-huh. ever do that any other time? Run up to him and do that? No, you just got there and do it. Tell him we're eligible. They announce it. Yeah, and and uh-huh. of course they they say nobody can hear I the mean, announcement. So yeah, <laughs> just admit you screwed up. You know how hard mm-hmm. would that be? I think everybody yeah. would be okay with that to say yeah, mm-hmm. you know what he did. But yeah. that's the way the game goes. Yeah. Anyway, that was my last hell no. Let's get to yours now. Man. Hell yes. So my hell yeah. Uh, I know you probably never. We've really probably never talked about this on this show. Sidney Crosby became the twenty second player ever in NHL history to have twenty goals in sixteen seasons. Wow. And then I think tonight he already got a point tonight. I, I don't think it was a goal. I think it was an assist. So he's 12th all time wow. in a, NHL, uh, NHL history. I don't know much about hockey, mm-hmm. but I know he's phenomenal. I and, mean, uh, well, that's just longevity. Yep, I mean, yep. Did you see? Uh-huh. Um, they showed him on the TV night four mm-hmm. last, I think. And mm-hmm. the visiting crowd was yelling his name that he was better than yeah, <laughs> the yeah. guy on the other team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that says something about him right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's good. That's pretty amazing. 20, 20 Now, times. now I, I now know you go to the you've been to the Wheeling games. That's have right. you ever been to like a pro? I've never no. been to a pro game. No. Nope. They say they say it's my father uh-huh. told me one time he had uh-huh. been to every pro sport there was to watch, yeah. and the very best one, even though he knew the least about it, the very best one to go watch was hockey. He said it was amazing and exciting, and mm-hmm. just, there's big guys out there. I mean, you don't realize how big those dudes are. Yeah, right. And uh, they can flat out move on them skates, and they yeah. knock the heck out of each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's fun. They say it's fun to watch. Had a college roommate. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's from Vermont. He uh, he loves hockey. He's yeah. a hockey man all the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's his sport. And he's probably watching tonight. John, yeah. Big John Bodie. Yeah. My roommate. He's a hockey man. All right. Sure. Hell y'all. All, all right. Two. All right. This is, my, this is my second one. This is going to my team in pro football. Ryan Poles probably pulled off one of the most landslided trades last year. He got DJ Moore in the trade. Just by moving back, having right, the number one right. pick, because now we got the number one pick, right? And we're starting to win now. Uh, we got a chance to finish eight and nine, go six and two in the last eight games. Got a decision to do with so Justin I Fields. Was say we we're talking about Flacco. What do you think about Fields now? Think he'll. Think I like he'll trade him? I like. Well, here, here, here's like the him here's the thing. They're saying like multiple people, multiple people that know. Now it's not Mel Kuyper. Everybody listen to Mel, Mel Kuyper, right. but other people are saying. This number one pick is more valuable than last year's number one pick. So if we got that haul on that number one pick, yeah. what can we get on yeah, that's right. this number one pick? Yeah. yeah, I mean that's definitely a one for next year. So right. that's setting up, yeah, <laughs> even next year. Yeah, 
And I like mm-hmm. I like Justin Fields too. I think mm-hmm. you ought to keep him. Well, uh, well, he's doing this, and you got DJ Moore to throw to. If you give him another weapon yeah. on their side of the field, you need to get him some linemen so they can. Well, the line's him. been the line's been uh, uh, better this year. So yeah. the guy they ended up drafting in Carolina in the Carolina pick last year, Darnell Wright from Huntington, mm-hmm. he's the highest grade rookie lineman awesome. uh, so, on that uh, awesome. this year. So yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, they're starting to. Kind of turn a little bit, yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think got to mm-hmm. use that number number one mm-hmm. picture from Hall. Yeah, <laughs> to get him get him a Hall. And we got the Packers this Sunday, so I yeah I would love I'd love to. And I, and I may God. I probably may not <laughs> should say this, but uh-huh. um, I'm not sold on Caleb Williams. I, I, I'm just yeah, not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, and and maybe that's why it's more valuable because you got him, Drake May, yeah. uh, Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Uh, shoot, you <laughs> not even talking about this. Too. Bo Nix and Michael Penix. Penix. I'm telling you, Pan- Penix. Penix and Knicks, and then um, JJ McCartney. I mean, there's some there's some talented quarterbacks oh, yeah. in this draft. Yeah, so, there is. so maybe that's what makes it more valuable than last. I don't know. Yeah. I, I really don't know. Yep, it's hard to say. But, uh, we'll see what they do. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting yeah. to see what they decide to do. So mm-hmm. yeah, be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. All right, hell no, man. This really isn't uh, sports related. <laughs> You can't talk about your date. I I eighty one traffic. Oh God. gosh, gosh. <laughs> we were only on for only on for about four miles last week, and in those four miles there was a wreck, and we were sitting there for an hour and forty five minutes. It's awful, ain't it? Yeah, it's awful. I always said you you go on sixty four, like if you're going to <laughs> Northern Virginia or something, you get on sixty four and you drive. You might see ten cars between Lewisburg and mm-hmm. the Virginia line. You hit that Virginia mm-hmm. line, hit eighty one, mm-hmm. just like Indianapolis five hundred, man. Oh, here they come. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. That was man. That that may have been one of the <laughs> <laughs> going down to Charlotte, that like I never seen traffic like that going to Charlotte before. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And it's bad down through. I used to drive uh-huh. down to Georgia pretty uh-huh. frequently and, and at traffic down through Charlotte and all was awful. Awful. All right, that's a good hell and all right there. I agree with you. What about the man? Yeah, okay, staying with the bowl game. All right. And Sonny, as I was trying to get popcorn, he ended up stealing my popcorn. <laughs> about half of it, Sonny. Not Sonny. Man, I had to walk by like six or seven concession stands down there. I mean, it was like half the stadium before I got to a concession stand that had popcorn. I mean, mean, like, don't don't get me wrong. I didn't mind having the Domino's pizza one out right outside <laughs> our uh, section, but you would think, ah, the next one be regular, have yeah. hot dogs and popcorn and and peanuts and candy. <laughs> no, no, I had to keep going. Had to keep going. <laughs> uh, you might have to file a complaint with the, the, the Duke Mayo people. Of course, they didn't have anything. That was Carolina, but Carolina. I tell you, that stadium. I'm like, I mean, it's nice, oh, it's. Yeah, it's nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. I've been in that one time or two. It is a mm-hmm. nice one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good hell nah. Yeah, no, no popcorn at the concession stand until you had to walk halfway around. I mean. That sure. reminds me of going to old Pitt. I ended up missing Beanie's punt return Ooh. on that. Yeah, Ooh. you know. Ooh. Yeah. I uh, I got in the uh, in the vanilla crown after Beanie's punt return. Okay. I decided yeah. it was time to celebrate. Yeah. So I did. Mm-hmm. Not much, but I did a little bit. So, <laughs> all right, that's a that's a good good segment, good uh, good conversation right there, and uh, we'll we'll keep doing this every week. That way, at least we can talk about what's going on yeah, in the sports right, world right, as, as right, time goes yeah. on. So, uh, I want to mention one thing, and uh, that is the New River CTC. Is that what it's called? C. What's the tournament called? Oh, uh, the New River College going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. CTC, right? Yeah, uh-huh. The CTC is going on over in Beckley right now, and we want to make sure we announce that uh, our good buddy Stevie Bragg will be participating for the Fayette County Special Olympic squad as they take on the Raleigh County squad. That game is tomorrow night at 530. So mm-hmm. we want to make sure we got that on the air for Stevie tonight uh, to let him know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We did it. Oh, Steve. Yep. Legend. He, he, he messaged me a lot. Yep, he messaged me a lot. He was telling me mm-hmm. about the game, and I knew I knew about the game. And, and uh, but uh, mm-hmm. he wanted to make sure he got the word out there. So we want to spread the word. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to go on over and watch those guys. A lot of good basketball over in that tournament, and uh, the Special Olympics uh, guys always they play every year in it, and it's always mm-hmm. uh, good entertainment as yeah. well. Right. So all right, and also my good buddy Larry Hall watching for the first time tonight. That's a buddy of mine. We went out and celebrated New Year's Eve together. I hadn't seen him in years, so. Uh, he's hey, watching. I got so I got so I got a story. Of course, it's not this tournament, New River, um, 
I can't even remember. CTC. CTC. Last week you had the little general shootout or whatever, and we, we were in it. Right. Now our good buddy Charlie Houck right. runs that. Anyways, we get there first night, and I'm standing there right beside the locker room door, and he comes over. There. He doesn't introduce himself to Tez, but he's introducing – and shaking, he's looking right at me. He says, "Hey, I'm Charlie. I'm like Charlie. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we sat at the same table, two chairs away from each other. Uh, like, yeah. like nobody know. Like it, it's crazy. He just knows me as a podcaster. Oh, he oh, he, yeah. he don't he doesn't know me as a coach oh, or yeah. or as a great golfer. Not <laughs> <laughs> right." <laughs> Yeah, you know, last time I read into it was at Calasinos, and he said the same thing. You the guy does that podcast thing. You know? I was like, like good I lord, guess. man. Of course, I guess those people like uh-huh. him. I guess they just know so many people. Oh, they do. They so do. They do. Yeah. They don't, uh-huh. they don't pay yeah. attention to us mm-hmm. peons. Yeah. <laughs> they don't pay us yeah. peons any mind. So, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I saw where you had uh, sat with him over at that. That's pretty neat. Uh, pretty neat thing. But yeah, I want to make sure I got that uh, announced that that was taking uh-huh. place, and. uh Stevie would be playing in it uh, tomorrow. He said he didn't know if he's going to be playing. He told me mm-hmm. either uh, maybe the center, but he might also have to play point guard. He he probably can. He can do it all. He can do it all. You know, he can do it all. All right, let's get a quick break in here. We come back. We're uh, we're getting closer to our uh, interview with uh, uh, the uh, all great Eugene Napoleon, and uh, we'll talk to him here just in a few moments. So stay with us. We'll return here on the court side with Coach Chris Show after these messages. Stay with us. Retro Reset Wrestling is coming to you every Thursday at 9 p.m. on the New River Network. See hard-hitting wrestling action from today's rising stars in independent wrestling. If you are a wrestling fan of any generation, let us introduce you to the hottest wrestling promotion in West Virginia. You can also join a live show at the Crossroads Mall. Retro Reset Wrestling is coming to you every Thursday at 9 p.m. on the New River Network. Welcome back to the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. Greg, Chris, Dave Gorby here with you live from McGuffin's Mystery Hole out on Gatewood Road. Uh, while we were in break, we had a phone call. We have a phone call from an audience caller, and he has identified himself as the head uh, of operations in the scouting department for the University of Michigan. Uh, his name is Jim Hairball. So, uh, Coach Hairball, how you doing? Uh, good evening, Coach. Uh, this is Jim Hairball, and uh, I'm a first-time caller. Oh. oh, God goodness. That didn't sound too good. It <laughs> sounded like my, my cat. First-time caller. There's your drum roll. And your cymbals. How about yes, that? Sir, Coach, I just wanted to check in with you guys, guys uh, prior to the championship and uh, get your thoughts on the upcoming game. Uh, oh, my bad. Uh, that's what you're supposed to ask me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Give us uh, your sir, thoughts. Sir, let, you know, let's just get this uh, crap out of the way first. Let's get this cheating thing out of the way. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, hell yeah, we cheated. Uh, I mean, uh, how the hell else do you think we get these W's? I mean, and uh, they say if you uh, ain't cheating, you ain't trying. That's exactly right, Coach. And uh, you know what? Uh, the coach only had to sit out two or three games because of it. Thank you, ESPN. <laughs> and I 
you know, and he still got to go uh, watch uh, Netflix and chill with his hot wife. Yep. Come on. Yep. But, uh, you know, uh, listen, Coach, uh, we don't need to cheat, uh, especially uh, versus uh, Washington coming up. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, that, uh, that Coach boo her. I mean, he's like, uh, I mean, hell, anyone stupid enough to pitch the ball wide twice and throw an incompletion on the 10-yard line with – you know, under a minute left in the half, and we uh, fix us with an extra timeout. I mean, uh, I mean, hell, they couldn't be that hard to beat. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hell, even Mr. Gorby has more damn sense than that. I mean, we saw that week in and week out on a Friday night. That's right. Over there at uh, Red Devil Stadium. Yeah, that's right. Gorbs did it up on that offensive uh, play sheet. And, yeah, he needs to be in charge of some of these guys – play calling at the end of these games it's atrocious I, I spoke out about that last night and how that washington coach uh made some horrendous decisions down the stretch <laughs> and i'm like what are you doing dude and uh yeah, yeah that wouldn't All happen right. with dave gorby at the at the range that's for sure go ahead i'm sorry uh, that's right well i mean his name is da booer and i mean uh <laughs> you know so but and 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 alabama cheat well sure as hell did <laughs> I mean, uh, we knew exactly what they were going to run in the first half because my uh, trusty water boy stood over there on their sideline with a <coughs> hat on and a fake porn stash. And, uh, I mean, uh, he, he told us what they were going to do. That's why they couldn't move the ball. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, he disappeared. And we didn't get him back till that final drive of the second half. And, uh, you know, in that last play, we knew what they were doing. <laughs> I think what happened, uh, Coach, he got hooked up with Big Al, the mascot. And, uh, they got, yeah, they got hooked up. I mean, Big Al identified him. I mean, you know, let's face it, uh, you know, uh, Coach, uh, you know, uh, Nicky Saban, he, he, he has these damn – uh, these damn glasses inside of Big Al's big fat elephant head, and they, you know, he looks like Lee Corso on steroids, and he uses these these telescopic lenses and those dumb looking elephant's mm. eyes to zoom in on our signals. He cheats too. I mean, how do you think he got so? <coughs> He got so good, and uh, you know. So, but anyway, our, our, you know, my water boy got hooked up with Big Al. They went out for peanuts and dinner rolls, which is an impressive sight, I must say. And uh, you know, so he didn't make it back to the second half. And I think that was kind of their ploy. You know, they kind of picked up my water boy, who was maybe over there, kind of hanging out for the wrong reasons, and you know, Big Al distracted him with his uh, with his dinner tricks. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, uh, but do you know what Big Al keeps in his trunk, Greg? I don't. Oh, you don't? I thought you knew that old joke. Let's see, Sabu. The big Al's a big, big Al's an elephant. You know what he keeps in his trunk? Uh, peanuts. No, a line of cocaine that only me and Coach Harbaugh can afford. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, now, now the rumors. Of, let's just go on there. You, know, you get the rumors about the NFL. And do you know what the NFL stands for, Coach? Uh, no, I don't. National Football League. NFL, not for long. Mm. <laughs> and that's and that's exactly right. Because, you know, if I go up there with Jimmy Boy, you know, he never stays anywhere more than a couple years. Three years in the NFL, he wins. He makes money. He goes back, makes more money, gets uh, hot chicks. And, uh, you know, we move on. And uh, But there's no way he'd give up that $7.3 million salary and that hot wife for uh, three more years in the in the NFL. And besides, you know, with the NIL and this portal thing, I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's way better in the college ranks now uh, than it is in the NFL. <laughs> because, you know, uh, it's like uh, college is like the NFL free agency without restrictions. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah. the NFL is pretty much on an even playing field pun intended <laughs> but now uh, we can cheat and it's legal uh you know well kind of except for still in the signs <laughs> but, uh, uh, did, did i mention that coach has a hot wife <laughs> you can to don skaggs <laughs> That's my neighbor Gore growing up he had like black love or something he hacked and coughed all the time oh, wow. <laughs> that sounds yeah, like 
The only difference between me and uh, me and Uncle Don gone <laughs> is I don't chew backer and uh, cough up the black lung and spit it out I got you. with my I backer. Got you. Anyway, Coach, uh, you know, I got to go. I All got, right, Jim. Uh, I got game film to watch at Washington Sideline, and uh, Posey and I, you know, we're going to head down to the Hong Kong market to get some of those King Kong Ding Dong Ping Pong balls right. and some free chopsticks, because mm. I'm going to mention old Muggy McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, mention Muggy, you get the freebies. Yes, sir, Coach. All right, you boys All take right. it greasy, and uh, – and uh, we'll see you next Monday night there at the NRG Stadium. And uh, I'll be the guy up in the uh, uh, sideline stands with a set of binoculars and a walkie All right. We'll be looking for you, Coach Hairball. Get you some uh, turpentine. Work on that cough a little bit and that hair ball stuck in your throat. Porcupine? Maybe that would help some porcupine. <laughs> Might help clear out the old throat. Okay. Now, right. Mr. Gorby, I said hello. And, uh, we will. <laughs> All right. We, we'll yeah, tell I you, think Coach. I've been hanging around, Coach Gorby. I got <laughs> <laughs> All right, coach. We'll see you guys. All right, coach. Take care of yourself. Be be right. fair out there. Oh yeah, no, yeah, right. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right, bye bye. <laughs> coach Jim Hairball, man, he's throwing out some accusations. So, so <laughs> yeah, on the on the funny <laughs> side. So I I know they did it for our bowl game, and they did it for several bowl games. Do, do you think this whole thing finally got smart with the college football? Say hey. Won't we put mics inside the helmets? Yeah, I mean, it like you know the NCAA uh, reminds me of West Virginia. We always do everything ten years too late. Like, you know? like, like I've always right, said right, that. Like, like it's just it's just funny. Like they act like schools don't have the money for yeah, to do yeah. that and all that. And no, it's, it's a it's billion dollar yeah. million dollar. Uh, uh, what you call it? Yeah. industry? Yeah. And uh, now they did it a little bit different. I, I think the coaches w- were able to talk up to the players, right, all the way to the play. Now I don't right. know if I want to be screaming my kid, <laughs> right, right, to yeah. the <laughs> to the till exact the balls, till man. one set. <laughs> you know, now NFL, I think it cuts off with like fifteen seconds 15 left. Seconds. Or something like that. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so hopefully that that will you know continue. Hopefully they get yeah, too, get good they, feedback on that. Obviously they'll tweak it probably a little bit, but if the, if they got it, and it eliminates know. a big problem. Man, it, it, it <laughs> is it is fun. It is funny sometimes the you know where where I go to these ball games and may, I don't know if you really see it too much on television, but like you'll see the. I mean, the, oh, they, yeah. they got they got three four GAs over yeah. there yep. doing signals signs, and, and signs, signs and, yeah. and and you know about two two uh, two of them are dummy ones and yep. I mean it is it, it's just crazy yeah, how, it what it's is. become you yep, know it is and like uh-huh. you said the simple fix mm-hmm. put put something in the helmet so they can hear yeah, the coach. yeah that simple all mm-hmm. right let's get a quick break in mm-hmm. here we're running just a little behind mm-hmm. get us a quick break and we'll be calling up uh, Mr Eugene Napoleon we're looking forward to that we hope you are too so stay with us here on the court side with Coach Chris Show we shall return after these messages stay with us. is coming to you every Thursday at 9 p.m. on the New River Network. See hard-hitting wrestling action from today's rising stars in independent wrestling. If you are a wrestling fan of any generation, let us introduce you to the hottest wrestling promotion in West Virginia. You can also join a live show at the Crossroads Mall. Retro Reset Wrestling is coming to you every Thursday at 9 p.m. on the New River Network.
Welcome back to the Courtside with Coach Chris Show. I'm Greg Chris. That's Dave Gorby coming to you from McGuffin's Mystery Hole out here on Gatewood Road tonight. And uh, we are tickled to death to have our guest on tonight. Uh, Dave, I know, uh, you know, I was a young guy watching him play. He and I are pretty close to the same age. He might be a little, I was going to say older than me, but he's probably a little younger than I am. Uh, uh, but uh, loved watching this guy play. Fantastic football player. One of the all-time greats at WVU running back. Uh, and, and I told you in the break or a little bit ago that – uh, he does a number of other things. He has all kinds of stuff going on, and it's all kinds of good stuff going on. Uh, so I'm not going to spend spend all the time. I want him to be talking instead of me. Uh, his his uh, resume speaks for itself. You can look at his his uh, playing career, uh, then look at the things that he's done since his playing career ended. Uh, wow, what what a life this guy has led! And he's so much fun to talk to, and so much fun to listen to. One mm-hmm. of the things he does is motivational speaking. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, I, I'm mm-hmm. sure you watch on YouTube. Well, I remember him being on the show before. Yeah, right, so, right, yeah, right. Yeah, so. and uh, he does the show on YouTube and, and just his yeah. little talks. And oh, they are so good. So They're so cool. good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we are happy and excited to welcome our guest tonight, uh, Mr. Eugene Napoleon. Mr. Napoleon, we appreciate you being with us so much. Coach, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me on. Oh, anytime, anytime. It's our pleasure to have you on here. Like I said, I remember watching you back in the day, and I loved watching you play football. You guys were awesome back then. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people, when they think of uh, the special time in West Virginia football history, 1988 obviously jumps right out at you, <laughs> and uh, you was right in the middle of that, and that's uh, that's an awesome, awesome thing. Um, WVU you just finished up. I wanted to, wanted to get your thoughts on this. I know uh, I, I watch you on a lot of different uh, platforms, and uh, I hear you talking a, a lot of Mountaineer football. Obviously, you're in the know. You know what's going on up there. Uh, we just had our bowl game. We were very successful in that bowl game. I, I just wanted to uh, kind of touch base with you and see, uh, get your thoughts about the about the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Oh, I was very excited. Let me tell you something. The week prior to that game, um, I kind of anticipated, you know, us coming out and playing very, very well yeah. in all three phases of the game. Right. But to see them come out right from the beginning and start fast, as soon as the game started. You know, you hit them for, you know, a, a nice long touchdown mm-hmm. pass and run. You know, you come back, you play really good special teams. Really, you play really well on defense. All that, all that stuff. You know, things that, a lot of times when you have that kind of a layoff preparing for a bowl game, sometimes you can get a little bit sloppy. All right. And we didn't do that. We played very, very well. And a few people, uh, well, North Carolina didn't have a lot of players in. Well, we had a few players we were missing right. as well. Yeah, some key ones. <laughs> yeah. Some key ones. So yeah. at the end of the day, listen, you play who's on the field. Right. So for me, I don't get caught up in who was who, you know, wasn't there. I get caught up in who was on That's the right. field. Right, right. Mm-hmm. We really and, showed we showed out. You know, and I don't know what you think about this. I told Dave earlier in the show and I talked about this uh, last night on our show up in Morgantown. Uh I, I felt like uh and I said before the game, I felt like West Virginia wanted to be in this bowl they wanted to go down there and play they were looking forward to it and they were excited about it i'm not so sure north carolina was and i think that played a big role in it as well that west virginia wanted to go down there and win and they they showed up you know i'm not so sure north carolina did (laughs) you know no absolutely and it's interesting because it's not really indicative of their program right you watch north carolina over the years they're well coached they Mm -hmm. come to play every game yep and I just think, unfortunately, when when the expectations are one thing and you yeah. don't get that towards the right. end of the year, mm-hmm. just I don't think people understand how difficult, how hard it is oh. and difficult it is to win eight, nine football games. Right, right. It's very, very, it's very challenging. It's Absolutely. very difficult, yep. especially now with the transfer port and all this nonsense going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you get in the bowl, you get in the bowl game. That's to me, that's really a successful season. I don't care what bowl game it is. It is. It can be the toilet bowl for all I care. Right. If you get into a bowl game, right. it's it's extra money for your university. Yes. Yep. And it's extra exposure for your university yes. and for the players. So mm-hmm. it, it all counts to me. It, it also it also puts you in a good mood going into winter workouts and right. spring ball and all that. Yeah, positive. Like just positive. a lot of good positives to it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you get mm-hmm. the extra practice. That's that's important oh, too, I think for these young guys. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. I was just ready mm-hmm. to say you get a chance to play a lot of those young guys in these bowl games as we did and I mean what a boost for them going into the spring. Oh, oh fantastic. And I know, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I don't know that this was going on before, but now people, uh, and like I said, I'm up in Morgantown, so I talk to a lot of folks and out and about and see people. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are talking about next year already, you know, and you haven't seen that in a few years. Mm-hmm. Now people are like, man, I think we're going to be pretty good next well, year. You know? Well, you, you take this for example, just say Jared Bartlett, you know, that was all, that was obviously 
a plan a plan thing. I mean, it wasn't announced till after the ball game, but Neil Brown, everybody knew that was going to be his last game. Right. So we got Tyreen Bradley in there. Yep. And I think he got 30 snaps is what I read. You know, that was that was almost about half the – I think there were 70-some offensive snaps for UNC, so that's about ha- – almost half. And I think he had like a top six PFF grade. You know, people go off that PFF grade. Right. And he had a top six PFF grade amongst defensive players. Yeah. And Now, I know that's just one game, but now we got film we can work with him a little yeah. bit, you know. Yep. And, he, and he's got to be Bartlett's – uh, replacement right mm-hmm. at yeah. that band so. yeah so important so mm-hmm. important i think mm-hmm. people are excited about next mm-hmm. year um you mm-hmm. guys uh now now you didn't go to the duke's mayo bowl you went to the uh, uh what was the fiesta bowl i think in the oh. national championship oh, game man. and uh what was <laughs> the I mean, i'm just curious uh, to know you know uh and, and i went to just about every game that year i didn't go to the national championship my buddies went mm-hmm. but i didn't go mm-hmm. couldn't afford it back the time mm-hmm. but um I'm just curious to know what it was like for you guys being there with all that hoopla surrounding everything and, and all the media and all that. How exciting of a time was that in your career? That had to be awesome. Unbelievable. I mean, first off, traveling with an undefeated mm-hmm. team, everywhere you went, everywhere we went, it was almost like it was like rock stars. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, leading up to that game. But I, let, me, let me go back for a second. Coach Neal and, and, that's, and our staff, did such an excellent job with making sure that we we didn't get too big headed. We didn't get too ahead of ourselves. We wasn't reading the press clippings and all of that. Right. And I think that's really indicative of a well managed and well ran, you know, from top to bottom football team. Right. So, but you can't help but to 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 just feel the tension and 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 just the excitement, all of it, all at once, leading up to the game. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, coming out of that stadium. Coming out of the tunnel, you know, it, it's almost like you can't feel yourself breathing. It's, it's really a really weird feeling, like you're about to hyperventilate because you're so excited and you're so pumped up to get on the field. And especially for all the marbles, you're talking about the national championship. You're undefeated. Notre Dame was undefeated at the time. You know, a national televised audience. It was unbelievable. But I don't want to sound arrogant when I say this. It was expected. Right. We expected mm-hmm. to go undefeated that year because right. we knew how hard mm-hmm. we were prior to that. We knew the work we put in. We had great senior leadership, a great coaching staff. We really had a really good game plan for every game. So we really did expect to be there at the end of the year. I, and that's not me being arrogant. That's exactly what we expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think if I remember correctly, you had, I think, five offensive linemen were like 50 year seniors or seniors wow. uh, yes. that had been there in the program all this time. Mm-hmm. Of course, a lot different then than what it is now with that. But yeah, you had that you had that offensive line that was just stacked. You had, I mean, skill positions were stacked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, major quarterback. I still, um, I, maybe, I don't know, maybe, and I don't know, there's no way to tell this, but I always thought that we were the better team. I mean, you watch, watch Notre Dame all year long and, and uh, you watch us all year long. Um, yeah. Major getting hurt, I think, just killed us <laughs> you know, just, just well, killed it, us. Changed, it changed the whole complexity of the game before i go any further i i'll be remiss if i didn't say this brian jones we have told me to tell you what's up coach oh, okay oh. good deal good deal yeah brian's our buddy man we've hey, been yeah, that guy. I, he, he, he's <laughs> just he's just politician way back on the show that's what, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah him and uh, him and dale wolfley they always had the competition about who's gonna be on the show the most you know so they're always ribbing each other and i, to, I told this story to uh, to brian whenever i had him on the show I'll never forget. Like I said, I was up there all the time. I went to all these games and I went to the away games and everything. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget. I was down on the field, running around there doing something with my buddies, and I turned around and ran right into him. And I, that that was the biggest human being I had ever encountered in my <laughs> life. I looked up and oh, was man. like, "Oh my goodness, that guy's mm-hmm. big." Man. Yeah, <laughs> but but anyway, he's a he, good guy. <laughs> he's a real good guy. And you know what? Shout outs and, and rest in peace to our to, to yep. our absolutely man, you know, yep. our fallen soldier. Yep. Uh, mm. Dale Wolfley, man. Absolutely. That, yep, that absolutely. Hit. Yeah, we miss him. We miss him awful yeah. bad. We was mm-hmm. uh, had him on the show quite a bit, and I was on his show a time or two, and, and uh, it's just really – I talked to him a lot, probably once a week, once every two weeks, and, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, sure do miss him. And uh, it's awful that uh, – awful what happens to anybody, but somebody so young, it's just terrible, you know. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Part of life, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get let's get let's let's get happy now. Let's get back on the happy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> let's, go, let's go back to that that game. I want to hear. Uh, uh, and again, we didn't get your answer on this. 
would we have won had Major been healthy? I'm going to tell you right now, and you're going to laugh at this. So I spoke to Tony Rice about three years ago. Uh-huh. And I said, let me tell you something. You do realize, had maybe not gotten hurt, you understand, we would have beat you guys by about three touchdowns. So he, he got kicked out. He laughed. I said, no, you think I'm kidding. We, If we played that game five times, yep. we win four to five times. Yep, I agree. And so I, I said, I, because nobody had an answer for Major Harris. No, no. If, if you remember his stat line, Major was scoring anywhere between three to four touchdowns by himself. Yep. (laughs) Either two in the air, two on the ground, or three in the air, (laughs) one on the ground. He was good for 21 to 28 points. So if you take that off the field, yeah. There you go. That that right that's now. a three, four touchdown yeah. swing. Right, <laughs> and and you know not only that, you know they've got to account for him then. And you could tell during the game he just wasn't right. He just you could just tell he was hurt and he couldn't do what he normally done. They had to right. account for him during the game, which opened up things for guys like you and and other folks. Oh, uh, you know because the focus was on him so much. And 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 I've always said I can remember going to those games and and it was just like when Pat White played. We didn't think about. Um, you know, what happens here if we don't get the first down? We're going to punt. We'll field position. But we always knew he was going to get a first down because if the play didn't work, Major would run a busted play and he'd get 30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he just figured out a way to do it, you know. And, uh, yeah, he was phenomenal. And I always felt like that that just it just changed the whole complexion of the game. It was just uh, d- tough, to take. Yeah. tough to take. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, l- listen, let me, let me share this with you, which is interesting. People don't understand, like – even a player of his caliber getting hurt on offense, it affects your special teams. It affects your defense because now if you're three and out yeah. three or four times in a row, your defense is playing more snaps. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You can't move the ball offensively. When you mm-hmm. punt, you're flipping the field. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. So oh, yeah. Yeah. People really understand the complexity of that when you lose a player of his magnitude. You know what yep. I mean? He, yep. he, Major Harris, in my opinion, uh, was – I've never played with a more gifted football player. Yeah. And that's that's and I'm not saying it cuz listen, he was that good. Oh yeah. Yes, he was. He was absolutely amazing and he was ahead of his time, you know, obviously. Absolutely. And uh, um, if he was he was there now, you'd be a pro to typical quarterback. Oh now, yeah. Yeah. And back then, you know, the NFL teams didn't want a quarterback that ran cuz they didn't want him to get hurt. Mm-hmm. And uh I'll be honest with you. They didn't understand it. Right. So you're 100% right. He was ahead of his time. The traditional way of playing that position, when Major came into college football, he opened the door and opened the eyes for a lot of people. People didn't really understand the fact that not only could he run, you couldn't say that he was an athlete playing quarterback. No, he was a quarterback that Mm -hmm. happened to be a great athlete. Yeah. And, you know, there is a big difference. You know what I mean? So this guy can make every throw. Yep. um, Can throw. 80 yards on his freaking knee, <laughs> yeah. 80, 85 to 90 yards on his knee with his right arm, and can throw about 65 to 70 yards with his left arm on his <laughs> knee. Wow. Yeah, it was something. Got yeah, he had a freaking cannon attached to his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 a lot of people forget that that he could throw the ball so had such an arm, uh, you know, because they're so used to seeing him scramble and run and all that. Uh, they kind of forget about the passing part of it. And, man, he could, he could sling it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he could sling it. He was good. So, yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Well, listen, I, I uh, you know, I, of course, I follow all your all your things, and I watch a lot. And uh, I know you got a ton of other stuff that you do and you have going on. And uh, I'm not going to question you about each thing, but what I would like for you to do is just tell us, uh, tell us what you do, uh, and, and include everything. I want to hear it all because it's an amazing, uh, amazing career that you have. And and uh, I tell you what, one of the things that I've uh, gained out of doing this, and I've been been doing this for a while. Uh, but getting to interview you guys, and we talked to a lot of a lot of former Mountaineers, and one of the things that we're always amazed by is not so much you know the accolades on the field, which were awesome, uh, but all the things that have been accomplished since you graduated or since you left WVU, uh, and what you've done since then. And we've heard so many great things, and you 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 epitomize that. You fit fit the bill perfectly uh, because of so many things that you are involved in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna quit talking again and just let you just tell me uh, what you're doing. And I'd like for you to also include uh, some of the things about your wife as well because she's phenomenal Absolutely. as well. First off, thank you so much for even giving me the opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. And I thank God. Let me let me first first and foremost to God be given all the glory. 
everything that that my wife and I have done over the last 28 years in business has always been with a focal point of great faith. So, you know, you you kind of you kind of go out and you want to be as positive and as productive as you possibly can. So I've always been the type you put your mind to it and you just do it. So I was blessed to have I've, I've written three books and, and all three of them are, are Barnes and Noble's best selling books. I'm a three time best selling author, which I'm, I'm wow. just so humble and blessed for that. From an educational standpoint, so I'm a, I'm a special education teacher. This is my 26th year teaching at the middle school level. I've taught at all levels, elementary, middle, and high school. Wow. So I'm a three-time award-winning teacher of the year. And last year, I won governor's teacher of the year for the state of New Jersey. Awesome. Wow. So and that, and I, I will say this to you. I, I was a high school teacher for 32 years, and I taught special ed for a couple of years when I first started. Uh, for you to have taught that many years and be in a middle school, Bless you, my goodness. Yeah, right. Bless you. That's all I can say. <laughs> Unless you've been there, you don't even know. <laughs> Absolutely. But I've been blessed to kind of couple that with this, for instance, the current book, Reflections 2.0. It's actually a motivational quotes book, but it speaks to those particular quotes that's in that book. It speaks to some of the things that we, we're dealing with now, even in education, the social emotional uh, aspect of it. So, you know, dealing with kids, you know, critical thinking and, and, and making better decisions and life altering type, you know, uh, quotes, it, they're all positive. So we use some of the teachers that are using my book. They use it as a breakout session, an icebreaker for their kids in the morning during language arts. Right. Gotcha. You know, at, at every level. So I'm blessed, you know, for that. Um, the, the, the other pieces, the podcast stuff, the Napoleon's Corner is just a positive you know, somewhere between six, seven to eight minutes, any, you know, less than 10 minutes of me just coming on every Wednesday and kind of talking about topics that I think kind of hit home, you know, and, and it, it's really coming from a moral code and coming from a really good place. It may be topics that people may not want to talk about, <laughs> which right. I don't mind diving into. Right. Right. <laughs> and some of that stuff is coming from personal experiences or experiences that when you, you, you meet people in, in different walks of life. And I've been blessed to play at the professional level in the AFL and the CFL. I've been blessed to be currently in, you know, in the music entertainment, you know, part of it for 28 years. So, you know, being, uh, being in that, in those fields, you meet just about everybody. When I retired from playing, I worked on wall street. Then I'm, you know, I, I did the sport, my sports agency for 10 years. So representing some really, really high profile, you know, uh, athletes and, it gives you a different perspective when you're dealing with people on those different levels and those different professions, you see things a little bit differently. Mm. So pouring, you know, taking from those experiences, even as an educator now and dealing with my, my, my students and letting them understand, I come from a single parent home in Jersey city, New Jersey. My mom, let me tell you something was one of the greatest human beings to ever walk this earth. God bless her to the grave. She went, Everything I learned about being a young man and being a leader and being positive and being a motivator came from my mom through the grace of God. So I'll tell anybody, when you hear that notion that a woman can't raise a man, I I don't believe that. <laughs> right. right. I agree. I don't believe that. You know, I'm, I'm the youngest of seven kids, and my mom, unfortunately, buried five of her seven kids. Wow, man. So, you know, for me to grow up in, in, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I've never gotten a heavy party into this day, and God willing, I'll be 58 years old, you know, next month. So those are the things with a strong moral code from a strong background of a woman teaching me and molding me and showing me the important things in life. I'm blessed to give that back, you know, to my students and to anybody that, that I'm around. I mean, that's really, that's the blessing. You know, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, um, your 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 uh, thing you do on YouTube, your your uh, broadcast on YouTube, and I want to make sure everybody knows about that. Uh, that's on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock, and uh, seven o'clock. And, and like like uh, Mr. Napoleon said, it's it's um, you know they're short, seven eight minutes, mm-hmm. uh, nine minutes, and uh, motivational. And I will tell you what, you watch those, and just I mean everyone yeah. I've and I've watched just about all of them. They all hit you somewhere. You know what yeah. I mean? It, mm-hmm. It's not like you're like, ah, I don't, that doesn't pertain to me. Mm-hmm. Everything he talks about, somewhere or another, yeah. you're like, you know what? 
I can relate to that. Yeah. And he's, he's done a uh-huh. ton of them. And I've, I've even texted him saying, man, that's what yeah, I used to tell my it, basketball players or that's, mm-hmm. that's what I used to tell my son, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, you wow. need to tune in and check that out. Those are awesome. And uh, like I said, yeah, they're short and, and to the point and they're mm-hmm. really, really, really good and worth going and listening to their archives. So mm-hmm. you can go in there and watch them all, yeah. which I have done. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no. I was, I was going to say, my, I, I can't. If I'm Batman, then my wife's got to be Robin. <laughs> so, you know, they say behind every great man, there's a woman. I don't like that notion. So I'll say behind, you know, aside, right. standing side by side with every great man, there's a woman. Right. Right. And she we've been married 30 years. And her music career, I started in the music business for her. So I started my company 28 years ago for my wife and what a great ride this has been oh, and man. currently still is, you know, from a music standpoint, she, she's a two time Grammy considered recording artist with four, you know, uh, <laughs> platinum awards and a goal selling, you know, uh, <laughs> album with 19 number one hit. Wow. Good Lord. Wow. Man. Well, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll interrupt here again. Uh, I've listened to most of them because <laughs> I go on there and listen to them. And uh, she's a beautiful woman, and she is a fantastic singer and mm-hmm. uh, man alive. She she's just so talented, and uh, people mm-hmm. need to go check it out. I mean, and they go listen to it. Uh, yeah. She's really good, really really good. And I, and I had to say her name Nya. Uh, not it's actually Naya. So it's Naya. N-Y apostrophe. I think I I think I got it right the first time, last time you were on the show, but I messed it up this time. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. but, but, uh, but yeah, she's phenomenal. Yep. And, and her real name is Tracy. Okay. All right. Tracy. Tracy. That's, a little, that's a little easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me say, she'll be the first, and I, I have to make sure that everybody understands this. You, you can't do this alone. So, right. our team around us are tremendous people, our producers. So, Kenny Black, the music machine, is one of our producers. You know, my cousin, I don't know. It, okay. PM Dawn is one of the legendary groups in the history of the music entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So my cousin, Jared Cortez, AKA, you know, he does her music now, but for the life of me, when people really don't kind of understand that, like we don't really, he's so low key. So we call him eternal. <laughs> and that's, that's his production. Like, Cause he's a, he's a t- tremendous producer. Right. He's produced her last, you know, two hit records. Uh-huh. Um, but when you look at his ca- their catalog, PM Dawn's catalog, there's no you couldn't even measure. Like I said, one of the best groups to ever do it in this industry, and to have him at the helm at, at her production. She does all her writing. She writes all her own songs, but the music, you know, these two producers are top notch in this business. And right. again, we've been fortunate and we've been blessed. Um, that team, you know, worked very, very well together. So I, I, I'll be remiss if I didn't mention that because we don't do this alone. Right. Yeah, right. she writes, but she's not a producer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure she might say, yeah, but in the end, I get up there with that microphone and I take care of business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because she does. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, while you're talking about these things, listening, and I'm just thinking, man, alive. I mean, um, Author, award-winning authors, music yeah. artists, entertainment, mm-hmm. professional football, mm-hmm. all these things. And I'm and sc- have one sc- more. school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have one more. I'll be remiss without saying this. I'm sure you know our son, Brandon. I, I, was, I, just about to, yep. I was just about to say that because <laughs> didn't he get on like a, a 30, uh, he's under 30, uh, a, thir- a top 30 under 30 list or something like that for coaching? Yeah, he's a- yeah, he's the defensive back coach mm-hmm. at University of Rhode Island. Yeah, and, awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the few coaches in the country that actually coaches the whole back end. So wow. the safety, the mm-hmm. nickels, and the corners. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, I did so see. I did see that where, mm-hmm. where he done that. That's awesome. Unbelievable. Uh-huh. I know you're proud of him. And uh, I have a son who coaches uh, college basketball, and I said mm-hmm. it's just a thrill to see him. You know, because mm-hmm. I coach basketball my mm-hmm. my whole career, and and uh, it's a thrill to see your kids. You know take that line you don't necessarily you don't always want them to do the same thing you did you know what i mean but when they when they choose to go in a profession that you you were in it you know you had an influence on them you know and that's uh, that's exciting wow. especially see him succeed and uh i know he's going to be successful mm-hmm. he's a fine looking young man how many kids do you have 
Just Brandon. Just, just Brandon. Brandon. Okay. Okay. I didn't know one for sure about that. I was, on the phone, I was on the phone with him today. He's actually speaking. He's presenting uh, Monday at, in at, in, tennis, in Tennessee at the uh, the coaches convention. Awesome. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Is, he as, uh, is he as is he as smooth uh, uh, operator, smooth talker, uh, flamboyant, energetic as you are? Um. Let me. He would like to think so. <laughs> well, I bet he is. I like to hear him. Right. I bet, he, I bet uh, he's pretty good. Man. I bet he you may not what? be as good yet, but I bet mm-hmm. he's pretty good. He would like to think so. Listen, we, Coach, we got to get him on your show. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. You know, I actually, uh, I think you had posted on Facebook something about uh, him getting uh, uh, him him doing the job and how proud you were and all those things. And I thought he'd be a good guest. How many? Uh, <laughs> and then I, I forgot about it. You know, I, I, Rhode Island. What what number of school is it? Like Rhode Island, this was his first year, right? Yes, first year at Rhode Island. Last year he was at Sacred Heart. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Heck yeah, we'll get him on. That'd yeah. be awesome. That mm-hmm. would be fantastic. I'd love mm-hmm. to do that. Love to do that. I tell you what, it, it, it uh, again, I'm just amazed at the things I hear uh, from these former Mountaineers and the things yeah. that they've accomplished in their lifetimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he's younger than me. I'll go ahead and admit <laughs> it. He's younger than I am. And uh, <laughs> listen to the accomplishments. I mean, I'm mean, just amazed and, and, uh, uh, it's it's just wonderful to to watch and, and listen and, and see what you guys have accomplished and uh, man alive you got a lot of irons in the fire do you ever do you ever just uh, uh, just want to sit down and just hide and say I need a I need a breather <laughs> oh yeah yeah I call it uh, I call it unplugging yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. So, you have to. So coach, uh, coach, you, you have to. Yeah, you have oh, yeah, to. absolutely. Got to decompress. Um, absolutely. Your your teaching career um, now. I'm curious to know this too. I know with all these other things going on, your motivational speaking and all those things. I mean, how do you balance all this? I mean, that's got to be a chore to, you know, to still be able to work as a school teacher and then do these other things that mm-hmm. you're involved in and everybody pulling at you in all these different directions. Uh, how do Absolutely. you manage? How do you balance all that out? I'll be honest with you. You know, it. it I think for me, um, I get bored rather quickly. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I have to, yeah. The way my brain works, um, I, I I I multitask very well. Always have, you know. And again, that's a blessing. But ever since I was a young, you know, a, a young kid uh, doing two and three things, so I've gotten used to that. I like to look at it this way: anything that you're doing that you love to do, I know it. People say it's cliche to sound corny. You're really not working. Right, so right. The and and you also for me my wife does so much. I, it, me being the CEO of, of Matt Vision Entertainment, she's actually not only just the artist, but she's also the, the vice president. And mm-hmm. and that part of her career, I manage her, but really she's doing the bulk of the music side. Mm-hmm. So that really doesn't, you know. Of course, we collaborate on everything, but. She handles that piece, which is so important. Mm. That takes a lot of pressure off me. Right. The school part of it, I kind of do things like my lesson plans. I'll do my lesson plans almost two months in advance because I know with with all the scheduling and all the other obligations. So that's the way that that kind of works itself out. Um, all the other stuff, the the the, the motivation of speaking and those things, I'll kind of set it up where if I'm doing something, if it's once a month. I try not to let it interfere with obviously with, with, with too much with school. Right. Uh, we don't let anything, which is a beautiful thing. We don't let anything interfere in, in, in our home. So when, when things get a little bit hectic, we both know how to just shut it down for a minute. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you need to do that. Right. We have, I have really good, and I thank God for this really good, uh, well, partners in certain facets. I would, my RB33 collection, if you don't mind, Coach, I, I, I definitely want to speak on that for a second. Absolutely. Absolutely. So about three to four years ago, I was blessed with an opportunity to 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 get my number 33 in the stores in, in, in West Virginia, right? Uh-huh. So, and on campus. That was literally a three-year uh, window. So it's so ironic how one of my students asked me a few months ago, Hey, Mr. N, I want to get your jersey, your 33 jersey from, you know, the West Virginia jersey. I called down to the store and they were all sold out. That was it. There was, no, you know, that that was it. The, the timeline for that particular deal was up. About two years ago, 
I had the idea. I've always had the idea. RB thirty three because obviously RB was my my position yeah. running back. Thirty three is my jersey number. I took the idea to a really good friend of mine. Is a partner of mine, John Cherry. We call him JC. He's the CEO of a company called Optimum Human Performance. They do everything. So they manufactured my RB thirty three collection clothing line. Awesome. So that's who it's manufactured through Optimum Human Performance, and. When I tell you the concept of it was real simple, I wanted, you know, obviously the fan jersey is a, is a signature jersey, so it's already signed. Right. Uh, we got hoodies, varsity jackets, and we got so much more stuff coming. But that's easy because JC pretty much takes care of that. He runs that whole collection, huh. among other things. So it's not that difficult. I mean, of course, we talk almost every other day or whenever we get a chance to to talk about what's going on, the business side of it and all that. But it's not that hard for me. I don't have to be focused on the manufacturing part of it or anything right. like that. Right. The designs, he does the designs. We, he'll, he'll send me something. I'll, I'll say, yeah, I like this. No, I don't like that. It's an amazing thing. So that kind of helps to 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 streamline all of the different things that I'm doing. I think, like I said, I thank God for my wife, the music side. I don't really have to worry about it as much because she takes care of that. Right. I take care of the teaching and the in the speaking engagements engagements. Her and I have an academic uh, thing that we have uh, where we go out to schools and she'll perform two of her motivational songs. She'll then do a Q&A with the kids. I'll do my little speaking piece. So that's something that we do collectively, which is fun. It's not really work. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's just a whole bunch of fun. So that's pretty much how we kind of split it up. When we come home, we're home. <laughs> you that's know awesome. what I mean? Awesome. You try to do that much when we're home because yeah. we do so much outside of that. Right. Well, and that's probably uh, why you're married still, you know, mm-hmm. after all these years. <laughs> you know, that probably plays a role in it. You got you to gotta take care of home. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, Absolutely. man. I mean, it's just amazing to hear those things and how, uh, how you do that. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. And, uh, uh, I know, you know, when you when you uh, teaching school was not easy. I mean, I, I, you know, huh. um, like I said, I did it for 32 years mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's tiring. It's exhausting at times. It's frustrating at times. It's wonderful at times. I mean, it's so many different range of things. Uh, but for you to be able to, to do all these other things at, at the same time is amazing. And and speaking of your of your uh, uh, RB33, we, we put the link. I think it should be up there. I can't see the monitor right now, but I think uh, – uh, the link should be up it's there. Up there, yep, it is up there now. So if uh, if you're watching, folks, and uh, you want to get on and check some of this uh, clothing line out, uh, do so. Indeed, do so, and uh, mm-hmm. check these these books and stuff out too. I'm telling you right now, you will not be sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. You listen to the music, it, it get you it get you the music and the book, and listen to the music while you're reading the book. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you I go. love it. <laughs> it could be, could be done better. Go in there. Go in there. Start your RB33 hoodie, uh, uh, jacket, jersey, whatever. Yep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Why right. you reading the book? Yeah. Right. You got multitask like a man <laughs> here, right. right here, man. That's right. Go get your agent's jersey on, get your, get your hoodie on, and uh, keep yourself warm. Absolutely. <laughs> do you uh, do, do you get back to West Virginia very often? I haven't uh, the last two years, only because we 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 went to when Brandon was at Sacred Heart. We went to a few of the games there. Mm-hmm. Um, Hopefully we'll get a chance to go to a few of the games here now that he's at Rhode Island. But it's been tough. I plan on, God willing, I'm gonna make it my business to get there. I want to get to at least three. My goal is to get to at least three home games this upcoming season. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. That's my goal. Yeah. Um, I just I wanna I wanna see the young guys up close and personal. Scott Callahan and I, we we do the college game day show. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I had a chance to there's, to there's, there's another thing he does, by the way. I watched that too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, again, I'll be remiss not to mention that, but we, we do that. And I also have Relatively Sports, which is right. my own show where I bring on guests and things of that nature. Yep. Yep. But I've had a chance to interview some of these, some of our recruits, and man, they're, they're really fine young men, coach. Right. They really are. Right. Right. Yeah, that's cool. I talk to young men. So I, I want to get a chance to get down there and see them play in person. Yeah. I was. Uh... I was coming home from Morgan. I'm, I'm working up in Morgantown now. I live in Southern West Virginia, but I'm working up in Morgantown at a veterans recovery place that we started. And uh, I was on my way home one day, and you guys were uh, uh, talking about. I, I got was listening to <laughs> to your uh, your college football take, 
And you said something really funny. I can't remember what it was, but while I'm driving, I shouldn't have done this, but I sent you a text message while I'm driving and said that was hilarious. <laughs> Whatever you said, I don't remember exactly what it was now, but uh, that's good stuff to listen to, to you. All these things. Uh, and like I said, the, 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 uh, the motivational sp- the spots, the, the, uh, uh, the, the podcast or the broadcast you do with your own show, that's, that's a good show. Uh, it's all fun to watch, and, and I really enjoy it. And uh, I try to watch immediately. Sometimes I have to wait a few days and, and get around to it, but, uh, but it's always good stuff and uh, always, always entertaining and informative. I'll say that. And Thank uh, you. I'll tell you what, man, you, you're, you're fantastic. It's, uh, it's just simply amazing to me what you accomplished and what you have accomplished and what you continue to accomplish every single day is just fantastic. And it's so exciting to watch and, and to get to know you and get to talk to you. Cool stuff. And, uh, can't, can't tell you how much we appreciate you being on. It's just been, uh, been uh, so much fun to talk to you and, uh, Gorb, I tell you what, I just I can still see thirty three running down that field, man. He can scoot, <laughs> he can scoot, Mister Napoleon. I can't tell you again how much we appreciate you being on. It has been fun. I wish we had another hour to do this. Uh, it has been a blast. And if you want to go ahead and tell one more time uh, about some of the projects that you're involved in, have a, have at it. Absolutely, I appreciate you. Well, currently, my wife has her single out right now. Uh, it's called Break Me. Uh, hit number one on the charts as well. So we're very happy. Hit number two in London in the UK. Um, on top of that, there's another little record that we have that's a, that's an up-tempo club record. Um, it's called Give Us Free, so that's out as well. Um, my stuff, the book, which I'm touring and, and, and speaking and, and going to different schools talking about, which is Reflections 2.0. It's, it's a motivational quotes book. And we have the RB33 clothing collection line that's out right now. And let me go ahead and do this before I forget. If you, my, my uh, social media, Facebook is Eugene Napoleon. Mm-hmm. IG, it's Eugene Napoleon, number 33. And on X, it's at Eugene Napoleon, number two. And my wife's stuff at Facebook, hers is Tracy Napoleon dash Naya. Her IG is T dot underscore Napoleon. And her X page is at Tracy Napoleon. So if you, you can hit us up on any one of those social media platforms, and um, I answer all my stuff directly. I don't have anybody answering those things for me. So yep. I vouch for that. Yep. Yeah, for that. yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't believe in that. I, I really thank God that people reach out to me. So I, listen, if they have the time to, to post or something, I, I definitely have the time to reach back out. And I just want to thank the fans and thank you, Coach, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Oh man, I tell you what, it was absolutely our pleasure. And I, I hope and uh, and pr- pray and I plan that we can do this again. Uh, in the near future, we look forward to it. And again, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Absolutely. You take care. And you already know how I'm going to end this, right, Coach? That's right. Go for it. Let's go, Mountain Air. There we go. Yes, sir. <laughs> there we yes, go. Sir. All right, Mr. Napoleon, we will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. You All right. Take bye-bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Eugene Napoleon. And like I said, Gore, see him running down that field. Man, he could play. Mm-hmm. He was a baller, man. I mean, people don't realize how good these guys were. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, that team, I mean, they played the national championship, so you know that's pretty good. Yeah. But – you know, he he's one of these guys who who a lot of people consider one of the one of the great running backs that we've had, but you didn't hear a whole lot about him because you had Major Harris and you had some receivers. Who together. who was the running back that always like dove over the pile on that team? Maybe I we should ask him. Yeah, you probably should ask him because I can't I can't recall. Hold up, I'm gonna have to. Look yeah, go ahead and look it up. See, I can't recall. I wanted to ask him. I, I don't know if he played in this or not. I think I think he was there eighty seven, eighty eight, and eighty nine. Uh, West, now he transferred in, right? Yeah, he started at Pitt. Okay. Yeah, he, he was a, a Dorset fan and uh, went to mm-hmm. Pitt. And he said, as soon as he got to Pitt, he talked about this the last time he's on. He knew that it wasn't a good fit. He could just tell. And he said, mm-hmm. when he went down to Morgantown, he got, knew the opposite. That immediately it was a great fit. And uh, that's when he headed to Morgantown. So thankful for that. Yep. A.B. Brown. A.B. Brown was a good one. Yes, sir. <laughs> Did, was, or was it Craig Taylor? Who, 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 Craig Taylor was a fullback. Uh, they AB, always seemed like there was a goal line. They ju- they jumped over the pile. I, I, I thought was A B was a he was more of a he was a slasher. A B was a heck of a running back. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was a good one. Um, that might have been Eugene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, I don't think I, it was Eugene. I, I don't think it was Eugene. I, I think it was one of those. I times. think it was either Brown or Taylor that did that. Yeah, Craig Taylor was a fullback. I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. Uh, a B Brown was a halfback, and you know positions were kind of different back mm-hmm. then. You know they played like a full house backfield that kind yeah. of stuff. So it's kind of hard. I mean, you, you're. I'm just looking. Shoot, you had Reggie, Reggie Rimbert, Rimbert on that team. Awesome receiver. 
<sighs> we talked about NFL officials, officials on here. Granis Bell was Grannis on Granis Bell, that's who we need to try to <laughs> yeah, nail down. That, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll ask Granis some of these questions. Hey, why don't you all just admit it when you make a mistake, Granis? I'll, I'll, ask, I'll, ask, oh, I'll ask Eugene if he can get a hold of Granis Bell oh, for us. Oh, man. Uh, you got Bo Orlando on here. He was a pro. Yep. Mike yep. Fox. Yep. Uh, Turnbull. I mean, you got pros on and this good team. pros, too. Not yeah. just pros, but good pros. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Played, played a few years there mm-hmm. in the NFL. Yeah, that was a heck of a team. All right, mm-hmm. we're out of time. We're way out of time. We, we started sure. a little bit we're late. We're having fun. That's right. We ran over a little we're bit. Don't want to get you in trouble for it. It's Darren. I mean, you don't get in trouble for it. So uh, <laughs> we don't care if we run over, do we? He just had a park on the right side. That's, that's right. Love the park on the right side. Everything's good. All right. That's going to do it for tonight. We appreciate you guys uh, joining us. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this extended version of the Courtside with Coach Chris show. Uh, I don't know, Darren, uh, before we go, uh, do you have basketball games coming up anytime soon or you're working on them? Tomorrow. Tomorrow night, and you're doing the Oak Hill? No. No? Princeton and Pikeview. Princeton Pikeview. Okay. Heard that? Tomorrow mm-hmm. night, Princeton and Pikeview. Mm-hmm. That should be a pretty good game. No. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> After I think about it a minute. Probably mm-hmm. not. But it might be a good one. Who knows? <sighs> two teams, two teams beat, beat us. Beat y'all, yeah. yeah. But y'all mm-hmm. played them. I mean, and, y'all battled. Y'all, and, y'all should have won the Princeton game. Y'all had a lot of chances there and just couldn't. Mm-hmm. Well, you had a, at one point you had a six point lead with like four minutes to go, and, and the next thing you turn around, we were behind by seven. <laughs> yep. You know, yep. and they went on like a 13 to two run on us. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. All right, that's going to do it for the court side with Coach Chris Show. We appreciate you do- joining us tonight. Uh, we appreciate our guest caller, Jim Harrball. We appreciate Muggy McLeod. And uh, most and foremost, we appreciate Mr. Eugene Napoleon for joining us. What a fun person to talk to. What an amazing guy. Just an amazing, yeah. amazing guy. And uh, so we'll, we'll definitely get him back on here again. He's always that stuff going on. It's always fun to watch. Uh, you need to do get on uh, get on the internet and tune into some of this stuff. Though. His motivational spots are awesome. And uh, his show is good. He has good guests on there. It's fun to watch and listen to. Um, his wife singing is fantastic. I mean, it's all good, man. It's all yeah. good. I got to get the book. I haven't got the books yet. I need to get the books and look at them. And, and uh, the Reflections 2.0, I think, was the last one. That's the motivational book that he has. So I need to get that. Anyway. Enough of this jabber, jabbers. We're going to go for tonight. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday night, as far as we know from now. Uh, supposed to get some snow, Gorb, so we're going to watch. It, it might be more freezing rain. I know. I don't know what's working, the pile of snow or freezing rain. Yeah. I don't want either one. I want to go south is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. All right. That's going to do it for the Courtside Show tonight. We appreciate you joining us. Good night, everybody.